I am back in the studio with Gilmore Tamney. Hello, Gilmore. Hello. Hello, Dave. Hello, world. Welcome back to Some Arts. Yes, I'm delighted to be here. You've been here twice now? Yes. Yes. Uh, I've talked with you. I've talked with Doug Holder, um, and as the spokes bottle for the mystery, the mystery showed up on a heavy leather topless dance party. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, so you're a scat TV regu regular, I, I would say. I have been wanting to have an hour-long special <laughs> a while, so yeah. Access Center superstar, all right. <laughs> um, so we're here to catch up with you, see how your winter's been, how your spring is shaping up right. now that the weather's amazing and right. hopefully right. going to get more amazing. Uh, winter was pretty doable. Um, I've been working on the drowning in logistics factor that um, we're, uh, having a work life and an art life oh, yeah. requires. Uh, but so far, no major disasters, which it feels always feels good. And I think I told you I, was, I had a one-hour holiday party that was a success that, um, that had a little bit of social experiment, a little bit of holiday in it. So that, that You kicked fun. people out after an hour? I kicked the, I said, get out of here. It was awesome. It was like a strangely fantastic feeling. So. Yeah, we were talking earlier about um, organizing people for events, and especially as the weather gets better, how tough it is, I feel, um, because people have such a premium on their weekends. Yeah. Like, you know, you throw out an event and people are like, oh, that doesn't work, but like the fifth weekend from that works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, planning is always kind of terrifying because, <laughs> because I'm not as popular as you, no. for one, and sure. so it's very, uh, it's, uh, you know, Th that's fine. I'm not. I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in favor of bitterness. <laughs> policy, so I would not hold it against you. If so, um, doing doing some readings coming up, and I realize that it is like just throwing your boogie board and just being like, that is the only available date that these readers can be here, or that place is available, and just like. Uh, but I, I have sort of taken a little bit of the coward's way out with some of my upcoming readings in that I'm having lots of other people read, too, and then that makes it more fun. Yeah, that, make, that makes it more of an event, yeah, yeah, for sure. There are so many talented people mm. out in Somerville and out in the world. It is really staggering, I think, um, and it's great to hear as much of that, experience as much of that, and, I mean, I love if it can, if at all possible it can help facilitate opportunities for people to be out there in the world with their stuff because it's really hard. Right? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hard for me. So, is there a big like close knit community of uh, writers out in Somerville, like short story writers, poets? Yeah, um, I am lucky enough to be part of a charrette that a friend of mine runs, and it's pretty much all women writers. I would say it's not just Somerville, it's Boston area, but it's like I was saying, it's like a brain trust of so many people who've read so many books mm. and just talking about, it's, it's probably technically a little writer nerdy yeah. for some people's taste, but like arc, suspense, endings. Cool. And yeah, so I, I really love the community aspect of art as much as I can be a part of it and seeing people's bands like that's awesome there's so many good bands in town in the Venn diagram of uh, writers people who write and people who are in bands is that is the overlap pretty significant or noteworthy honestly I think it's not that much mm. I have been a little bit surprised I mean there's some but not as much as I might have expected. I think there's more visual artists and band really? overlap. Yeah, I would say so. Wow. How, what is your, what, what's your take? Um, what's your hot take on that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know. I'm, oh. I'm just dealing with people in their in their circles. Oh sure. I know. Yeah. I know. It's weird. You never know who knows each other or yeah. has had a history with each other. Every attempt I make at sort of armchair sociology around mm -hmm. this sort of thing, I'm, I always like sort of stall out like, and then there's sort of personal connections of like, 
turns out they're married or something like that. And you're like, wow, who knew? Who knew? Yeah. 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 So uh, what do you have coming up for the spring? Um, well, I just, this was just published by o uh, Ohio Edit. Um, it's haiku, as you might imagine. <laughs> is it? Is. it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shocker. Uh, so yes, um, that has been a very big and exciting deal personally for me, possibly the world at large. So I'm going to be in New York at KGB with Lisa Carver. Uh, so I'm just very excited to read with her and Amy Fusselman, who is a great writer. And um, I have, I'm reading at the Somerville Public Library with Tony B, who is one of my very favorite local poets, and Natalie Shapiro. Very so, cool. Yeah. I, I think haiku works well, but it's not like you don't want to hear someone read that for 30 more. minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a weird, you know, yeah. it would be weird. It, it, nobody wants to hear poetry, anybody's poetry for 30 minutes, I don't think, but um, <laughs> so I'm going to probably read a little bit of other stuff. Well. Well, well, I uh, recorded a, uh, uh, a poetry reading at the library that was an hour long. Wow. And it was actually, it was, it was really, it was, it was three different poets. Okay. So I agree that nobody, you know, watching a single poet talk for like an hour would be really rough on anybody. <laughs> but three, three poets in an hour, that was, that was actually really nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, that's heartening. To hear, yeah. I think you'll have success with your with your reading. Uh, th yeah, you you don't want people to feel held hostage. I'm really pleased that everyone I'm going to be reading with. Actually, there's one other reading on May 18th uh, with Grace Toulousen and Jen Dederick that everyone I'm reading with I really admire as a writer and am enthusiastic about. So that's nice when that happens, right? Yeah, yeah. When yeah, you're yeah. when you're not stuck on a panel or in a in a in a reading event like that and you don't jibe with the other people's work. <laughs> sure. Which, which has happened, right? right, I imagine. Right, right, yeah, if you're just, it's not even antipathy, it's just. Uh, you don't get their work or right. whatever, it doesn't do it for you. Uh, just, they're really into something that doesn't interest you and yeah. you're just straining to find something to say about yeah. it. Without sounding like you're straining to say something about it, so yeah, and I know that's that's kind of it can, it can come off as a snobby thing to say, but you know, there's there's just a lot of varied interests out there oh, in the yeah, world, yeah, and yeah, people yeah. are into what they're into, and it's great. It doesn't often, you know, match with what I'm dealing with, and that's fine. Right. So right. I, no. I, I, I'm 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 justifying my statement there. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, I, don't you think, though, I feel like I've had, I've encountered what is probably technically great art that I'm like, just not, doesn't engage me for personal reasons. Mm. I mean, I have said, my take is like, you could have the most exquisitely made baba ganoush, but if you don't like eggplant, you might appreciate it, right. but you're not going to be gobbling it down, right? Yeah. So that's... I feel like it's a little different with art in that, um, like, museums are, are kind of, and galleries are kind of spaces where you get to see different ideas. Yeah. And you can go from one, one set of ideas encapsulated in this painting or this sculpture, this installation, absorb it for the amount of time that it requires, and then you move on to the, the next set of ideas. And so, like, even if I don't totally uh, sink in with a piece of art, I can I can be attracted to the ideas that uh -huh. they're attempting. Yeah, 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 so yeah. whether or not it was successful is something else, but but the ideas that um, every piece of art can kind of inspire, um, I'm always on board with. So tell tell me more about haiku for you. Yeah. Um, how did how did the idea come up for this? You know, honestly, it's one of those weird things where I have no, I have don't have a recollection of why I started writing haiku. I did write two very long, and may I add, unpublished novels, and um, there were a lot of words in both of those, and it was lovely and exciting to be doing that. I really love writing longer pieces, but there is a discipline and a fussiness and occasionally a straitjacket feeling is challenging and sort of infuriating. I think mm. it must be a little bit like crossword. I don't really enjoy crossword puzzles, but the way people talk about crossword puzzles 
And if you have a thought or a noticing to try to trim it into the best possible expression of that moment or that idea into this tiny little thing. I also think it's very manageable as a reader. Mm. Like having written very long blabsome novels, you can feel a little suffocated by words. But I think was like the nice thing about haiku for you is you can read it in any order. Like I love that. I love being able to read things not necessarily chronologically. Yeah. Um, so, and it feels like it's, you know, it's sort of ephemeral. I mean, in the, like, it, it's like an idea or a thought that goes through and you don't, like, and that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. I, I don't really know if that's the best way to describe it. No, that's really, that's really great. Yeah. Um, and, and the haiku form is so rigid that, and you have to stick to that, otherwise it's not a haiku. Right. Um, and, and often that kind of whisper of an idea is is you know the haiku is the only way to get that across it's, it's kind of like perfect for that yeah you know i've seen some like one sentence poems but um you know they don't come across the same way that a haiku does like a haiku yeah a haiku like it forces the break in certain places and it's it's a little bit like a um when someone does like a great soccer move mm -hmm. or something like that. It's almost like motor coordination. It's like seeing somebody do a magic trick. Uh, I would not say all of these here are have trend, like been able to do that, but it's like this little puff. It's a moment of grace or gosh, that sounds pompous or something. Like this. <laughs> you know. I liked it. Yeah, uh, moment okay, of grace. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like you you landed it yep. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that is very satisfying. Not all things like you have some, what seems like a very haiku friendly thought about a daffodil or something, and it just, you're just squishing it and squishing it, and it, it just doesn't work. Like yeah. You have to let it go. And then that is kind of a. So where can people find out more information? Um, haiku for you is on Ohio Edit, which published it. So that's just O-H-I-O. E-D-I-T dot com, and then there's a link right there. Uh, and then what about your upcoming readings? Okay. Uh, do you have a website? I almost do. <laughs> <laughs> I am battling with, battling with Squarespace a little bit. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. know if you've done that, but I'm almost there. So there will shortly be a GilmoreTamney.com. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming into the studio and chatting with me again, Gilmore. It's, it's always a pleasure. a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, fun, and I'm glad to be here. And, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey. Yay.